when you say the word intimacy to women, their brain doesn't necessarily go straight to sex. Again, for a lot of women, I'm not saying all. And so there, it creates this disconnect in relationships, in the bedroom, in, in all these different ways that can leave both parties very unsatisfied. Because when the woman's not getting what she needs from an intimacy standpoint, well, it tends to then trickle into her not providing what that man needs uh, from an intimate standpoint as well. So I want to help you understand what types of intimacy this woman is craving because there are various types and understand that sexual intimacy is just one type of intimacy, okay? But let's start with the first one that women are craving and that is conversational intimacy. So essentially, a lot of women want to be able to have talks with their partner. But not just they want to be able to talk to you. They want to be able to share deeper parts of themselves with you as well as you with them. They, they, want, to, they want to feel like you value them more than just the physical intimacy. All right. And so your willingness to have these deep conversations allows them to feel more special, allows them to feel more valued, allows them to feel more bonded to you, okay? Now, I know a lot of men just feel like some of these conversations feel pointless and that the woman is going on and on or maybe she's, you've already heard this many times before, why do we gotta keep having the same conversation, all these things? But you're missing the point. It's not even necessarily about the actual information being exchanged. It's about the moment, the experience of, again, sharing these deeper things with each other. So as a man, if you are trying to build and create a healthy, happy relationship, and again, and understand that you pouring into her in these ways will fuel her even more to pour into you in the ways that you need, then you have to create time and space for these types of conversations. Now, I know there's a lot of information, a lot of people on the internet telling men don't be vulnerable with women. And, you know, when I say deep conversation or conversational intimacy, being vulnerable is a part of that. Now, I'm, I have a whole separate video that I'm going to be coming out with on why a man should be vulnerable. I'm not going to get too deep into it right now, but I, I'm just going to say this. Understand that being vulnerable doesn't mean being emotional, okay? I think sometimes when men hear vulnerable, they think crying in front of a woman, uh, you know, being in this sad state in front of a woman, exposing your weakness in front of this woman. And the weakness part to a certain extent is true, but you don't have to be all emotional to be vulnerable. Being vulnerable is just opening up sharing deeper parts of you, sharing things that maybe not everyone else or no one else does know. Now, I know there's a fear of, well, what if this woman throws this back in my face? What if she uses this as ammunition? I would argue that if she does that, then you've gotten your proof that maybe she, that she's probably not the woman you should be dealing with to begin with, because trust and believe not every woman is taking what you said and trying to use it against you, right? However, also, I think you as a man has to get to a point where you own who you are at the deepest level. So essentially, if I reveal something to a woman and she throws it back in my face, I'm not hurt by it because it's like, okay, that's, that's who I am. That's what happened. It is what it is. I've come to peace with my stuff. You know what I'm saying? Whatever you throw at me ain't going to bother me. It may, it, the fact that you try to use it to hurt me will be my issue. But what you said and brought back up, like I'm good. So I think as a man, you have to ask yourself, if I'm, st if I'm scared of this being thrown back at me, not just for the sake of her using this as a weapon, but how it affects you to even have her say this to you or whatever, or bring this back up, then you have to ask yourself, have I healed from this? Have I found peace with this? And if you haven't, I would encourage you to do that so that these types of scenarios can't bother you in the same way, okay? But you want to get to a point where you can open up more because again, if you're looking for the best relationship you can have 
and strengthening it and fortifying it, then yes, conversational intimacy with a level of vulnerability is going to help do that. The second type of intimacy uh, that your partner is craving or your woman is craving is affection without sex. All right. And let me add to that. It, it's even it's affection even with sex. All right. But let's just start with affection without the sex. Here's what I mean. So one thing that I, I came across a lot and, and it happened to be brought up many times with married couples where the wife would say, I feel like the only time he wants to touch me is when he wants to have sex. OK. And so essentially this woman starts to feel like a piece of meat an interchangeable body that you're just using for your sexual pleasure, but she does not feel loved as a woman, as a human being, as your partner. Now, I understand, I think some women struggle to understand the fact that as men, there could be situations where you genuinely were going into it, just willing to hold her or cuddle with her or whatever. And because of our hormones and the way that we're wired, you get turned on in the process. So you try to get you some. OK. And and, it, and so to her, it starts to feel like you're you only were willing to cuddle and do these things just so that you can make your move and try to have sex, not realizing that, no, it just that was the natural progression for you. And I say that to say it's important for you to make sure that, it, that if that is a struggle for you, you express that to your woman. You let her know that this is what's happening and that you understand and do value her outside of just having sex. Now, what will help is that if you do make a move in that scenario and she's like, I'm, you know, not right now, I'm not in the mood, you don't show frustration, anger, you roll with it, you accept it, and you continue to be affectionate. Because if you stop being affectionate at that moment, well, then she has no reason to believe that you you weren't just doing this just to try to get sex from her that night, all right, or that day, or that morning, or whatever. So you 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 want to make sure you're conveying that message because again, she wants the for many women, they want the holding of hands. Again, at times where it's not about sex, they want the random kisses and all these things when it's not about sex because they want to feel like you value them for more than just having sex. All right. So take time to learn what are the affectionate things your partner likes. Now, you know, I feel the need to mention there, there may be some of you who are with women who feel, who tell you or have, who have expressed to you they're not very affectionate. All right. Now, I'm a firm believer that in the vast majority of cases, if not all of them, that's a sign of a deeper issue that needs to be resolved. But I'm not going to sit here and say, you know, I, I never gonna, I'm never going to say something is 100 percent. So I'll just say that I believe that's the case for most for most. And if you are comfortable with that environment and you are happy in that environment and you guys work well together with that being in place, hey, do your thing. Right. But you want to make sure, because I do think for most women, when they're in a relationship with a man that they love, they want more affection. All right. So work on that. Learn what she's desiring and looking for in that way. And again, the more that you can show her that you can give that, the more she's going to be sexually receptive to you. Now, I have to bring it to part two of this, which is the affection with sex. I'm not going to get too deep right now, but let me make this point. I've learned that for a lot of women, the sex, the sex itself may not be the greatest, but if the experience surrounding it pours into them in other ways, they can still be very happy and it can still make them want to come back for more. So what I mean by that is this, some of you, and this is not shade, this is not disrespect, but some of you may be, you know, maybe you're quick, <laughs> you're fast in the bedroom, okay? You, 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 you maybe a couple minutes here, there, five minutes, whatever the case may be. Now, there's a study that shows on average a woman needs 20 minutes before she can potentially reach orgasm. So if you learn how to be better at foreplay, how to be more affectionate throughout the process of the sex, so even though you're getting it in, still the kissing, the touching, the caressing, all these different things, you are enhancing the overall experience, even if it doesn't last as long as, you know, 
that it could potentially could, it still enhances it for her and it makes her more willing to come back again next time. But if you only have sex without affection, all right, in many cases, that's going to work against you. And it's also the affection afterwards. So there's a lot of guys, and, and again, we're, we're thinking about healthy relationships here. There's a lot of guys, they have sex with their woman and they roll over and they go to sleep, <laughs> okay? Like, yo, if you got at least a little bit of energy, that's your time to cuddle up with her. That's your time to show her some affection outside of the actual sexual act. And she will find value in that. So find ways to implement more affection in your relationship. And I'm telling you, you're going to see how much it helps in all aspects of it. Now, real quick, my videographer brought it to my attention. He's like, yo, but sometimes we tired after we finished and we're done. This is why it's so much more important for you to get the affection in the beginning and during the process. Because yes, some of y'all do want to roll over and go to sleep. Some of y'all are really out for the count. Okay, fine. If you know that's you, then you have to find ways to get it in earlier in the process. You have to find ways to maybe stretch out the foreplay a little bit longer. Give her something to work with. All right. And I'm telling you, if you do that, and, 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 and of course, this is specific to the women who, if you're with a woman who desires that from you, have that conversation. And in that conversation, be open to her constructive criticism. Listen, I don't care how great you are. I don't care how great you've been with other women. All right. You have to learn your woman. You have to get in tune with your woman. Okay. And so if she has things that she needs from you, be open to it. Do not be dismissive. Consider what she has to say. I don't think men should be mad or take issue with a woman's desire for a man to be at least financially stable or for women who even like for a man to be able to provide a more luxurious lifestyle. To me, I view it the same way like men want a woman that looks good. Men want a woman that will keep themselves up. A lot of men do. We like different things. And, and here's the reality. Why take issue with something that has been this way since the beginning of time? It, it, it ain't changing. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's, it's the same thing I'll tell women when they get mad at men who place a lot of value on looks. It's like, yeah, men have valued beauty since the beginning of time. That's not going to change. Why get mad at it? Just accept it for what it is and navigate through this as best as you can and do what works for you. So as a man, it's like, yo, don't be mad, frustrated, take issue with it. It is what it is. Live your life, do what's best for you, but understand that there are women at every level. There are women who don't mind a man who doesn't have a whole lot financially. There's women who want a whole lot. Go with what works for you and where you can find your happiness. But absolutely, money's going to play a role. And let me say this because, again, there's a lot of information you guys are getting on the internet. I, I sometimes come across messages that are telling you you need to make six figures and all these things before you even go out there and get with a woman. Listen, don't listen to that. Some of you won't be happy making the sacrifices necessary to make six figures and then sustain that. That's not the life that you will find your peace in. There's no reason for you to push for that then, okay? If you can make your... and because. Some people say, oh, well, you need to make that much to survive. No, there's a lot of different factors that go into it. There are people who make, I think they said 36%, I, I may be wrong, but then they said 36% of people making 250 grand or more are living paycheck to paycheck. It might be higher than 36%. So it's not just having money. It's how you manage your money. Do you even have disposable income? I've met guys who were making 60 to 70 grand a year. And they were good. They were living a good life. They had their home. They had savings. They were good. So it's not just you have to make a certain amount of money. And again, if that's not who you truly are, then it's no point. And the last thing you need is a woman who wants that kind of life, but it doesn't fit how you want to live your life. So money is a factor, but don't, don't go for what's unnecessary for you. All right. So now... Um we got a few more to go. And the next one on the list of things that women like in men more than looks is assertiveness. Okay. Now, I feel the need to mention this right off the bat. 
if there's a woman that objects to a man being absurd or says, I don't, I don't like a man who's assertive. I'm not going to say all cases, but in most cases that stems from some kind of lack of healing that may stem from their perception of assertiveness is abusive, is controlling. It, it, you know, it, it's just something negative due to maybe their past experiences or what they've seen in their household, so on and so forth. But outside of that, most women are going to agree they like an assertive man. And I think for a lot of men, that is something that is lacking because to be assertive, you need to be confident to begin with. All right. That confidence gives you the, 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 the drive or the willingness to be assertive and step up, step up and do what needs to be done and take charge in certain situations. Okay. And so the other problem that happens with a lot of men is in so much trying to accommodate the woman, they may sometimes become very passive and they think that they are gaining more favor from this woman by trying to accommodate her. But if it means being passive and always taking a backseat approach to whatever she wants to do to make her happy, that's going to actually make you lose her respect. Women don't want a yes man. All right. Doesn't mean that don't ever say yes to her again. If there's, if it doesn't mean purposely say no just to say no, I don't think that's necessary with a woman who's truly into you and best for you. It's just that stand true to who you are. Stand your ground when you genuinely need to stand your ground or feel a certain kind of way about it. And again, it doesn't mean be a dictator in this situation, but. It does mean be able to confidently express why, no, this is what we, we need to do right now. And I need you to understand that. Still hear the woman out. Still consider how she feels. If you want a healthy relationship, you can't just do what you want to do and ignore how she feels about things. But there's going to be, and it's not even just about making decisions. There's going to be moments where she wants you to be assertive. I think one of those moments tend to be in the bedroom. All right. you you And, and again, the level of assertiveness will vary depending on the woman. So learn what also works with her, all right, and doesn't cause conflict, but be confident as a man to be able to do that. And, and so I think just don't overlook that. Don't become too passive. And for those of you who just say, well, I, that's just not how I am. Again, if you're not, so the same way I said the woman who objects to it, chances are it stems from a lack of healing. I would argue that for a lot of men, the man who lacks it, it stems from something they have not resolved within them. All right. And again, it's blocking their willingness and confidence to be able to stand strong and be assertive in certain moments. So if you are struggling in that area, take, take a deeper look within as to why that's the case. All right. Number, uh, well, it doesn't matter what number it is. The next thing on this list of things that women like uh, in men more than looks the ability to make her laugh or even just a sense of humor in general. All right. I think, I think most of us have seen that a funny man can still get him some women. All right. Because here's the thing at the end of the day, you know, for a lot of guys, they needed something that opened the door to, to be able to then gain the favor, gain the interest of a woman. All right. And so, Making her laugh is such a powerful thing because one, laughter is such a positive experience, all right? So that attaches positive thoughts and perceptions onto you because you're able to get her to this happy place, so to speak, okay? Also, the ability to laugh, it, it creates a level of vulnerability. To laugh and, and to enjoy the moment, we have to kind of let go. And, and, and let loose. And so your ability to do that, to essentially bring her guard down in that moment, again, very powerful. And, and, and ultimately, you, you just become someone that she wants to be around because you're able to make her laugh or you're able to laugh at yourself and just overall have a sense of humor and not be so uptight. Okay. Now, it doesn't mean you need to be a goofball 24-7, right? It's about balance. But, and again, if you're just not that guy, you're just not that guy. There's going to be other women that don't mind if you're not the funniest dude. It's just to say that, yes, this does 
have an impact. This can be very helpful. I do think it's one of those things where some guys are just funny as hell. Some guys aren't, 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 that, aren't like that. Again, be true to who you are. But I do think an ability to laugh at things is, is one to say I'm just not that kind of a funny guy. It's another thing to always be serious all the time and not be able to laugh at life, all right? If that is your struggle as a man, then I would say, again, you got to take a deeper look. Why are you so uptight? Why are you so tense? Why are you so serious? What's really going on? You know what I'm saying? Remember what I said just now. Making her laugh is a vulnerable thing. For many of you guys, your inability to laugh at things is because you struggle with being vulnerable in that way. All right. You struggle with letting your walls down and letting loose and being relaxed. So if that's the case, you got to go to that deeper place and resolve those things. Because listen, at the end of the day, it's not even just about her and what attracts a woman. It's about you enjoying your life more. It's about you being more at peace. And again, that makes you a, a more enjoyable person to be around in general, which then can create other opportunities in your life. So sense of humor definitely can be a game changer. All right, and last but not least, I've already mentioned it a few times, but we'll just highlight it again real quick. Confidence. A confident man can overcome some deficiencies in their looks, all right? Like, yo, it really can go a long way, especially when you add confidence to other things on this list. And I would argue if you have some of these other things, that helps you with your confidence. But one way or another, lack of confidence can make you unattractive. And then it could cause you to struggle with being assertive. It can cause you to struggle with your communication. It can cause you to struggle with how you show up in life and how you show up in that dating process or in that relationship. And so you don't want to be a drag. I, I say that because there's a lot of situations now and kind of going back to that low testosterone, there's a lot of men battling with low energy, depression, all these things. And I understand some cases are more than just low testosterone and some simple fixes. But for a lot of you men, it starts there. And what happens now is you expecting this woman to still want to be with you despite you operating in a very low energy, all right? That's not fair to her. It's not fair to you. It's not fair to the relationship. You've got to show up as your better self. And so working on your confidence, working on your health, working on the things that will help elevate you in this way is extremely important. But also understand this, if you are struggling with being confident, again, it goes back to doing that deeper work and asking yourself, why? Why am I not that confident? Or where did I lose my confidence? If I had it at one point as a child or even in my, into my adult life, where did it fall off the cliff? Where did it start to go downward? And whatever that situation is, we need to attack that. We need to address it. We need to release all that negative energy so that you can get to a better place and, and start to identify think, something in your life that you can, I always say, find something to conquer because conquering something, facing challenges helps instill confidence in a man and helps boost that man's testosterone as well as other health benefits. But one way or another, make it happen because that confidence will take you a very, very long way. My thing is this, if you resigned and you went on to pursue your passions, your purpose, then I'm all for it. Yeah. I was the king of quitting. When I was <laughs> there, all right? The minute I was done with a job mentally, I quit. Yeah. And people would think I was crazy. Yeah. I did not care. If I don't feel comfortable anymore, happy, I'm gone. But I didn't quit and then just stay home and do nothing. Yeah. I quit and found something else. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm, I, I support the men who have shifted out of the workplace because they're pursuing bigger things or what truly aligns with them. I do not support the men who just quit and now they're just staying home doing nothing. Mm. That's a problem. You know mm. what I'm saying? No, you, you can't just think you can just hope that another stimulus check is gonna come <laughs> through or, or you know what I'm saying? Or yeah. whatever's gonna happen. Like, nah, you gotta get, like in the scripture it says, a man who doesn't work doesn't eat. Mm. You need to work. Yeah, That's exactly. just the way it is. Yeah. Yeah. Man, so Beautiful. I'm asking you a question. All feelings, no facts. Okay. All opinion. There's no just, <laughs> just right. your feelings. Don't okay. show, don't put no data in the comments. <laughs> All feelings, no facts here. Do you feel as though 
today, there is more women with jobs or more men with jobs? And I want to clarify, let's do two things. Careers. More women with careers or more men with careers? Feelings say yes. More, more which one? More women. What about jobs? Feelings say yes. <laughs> what do you say? Women. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what the facts are. I don't know what the facts are either. But yeah. when Especially I go career. out, yeah, when I'm out, I was just saying, uh, I was at the, a few doctor's offices recently, everyone in there is a woman. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Different places that I go to, you go to the grocery store, pretty much 99% is women. Everywhere I'm constantly going. Now, granted, maybe if we went to a construction site, yeah, then yeah, it, it would change story. our perception. Yeah. But, I, so, but just based on what I typically see, mm -hmm. I would have to say women. I love what you said because I think there is environments. I think it plays twofold. I think one, when we're outside, we're usually seeing service-based jobs. Yeah. And usually men are behind the scenes. They're construction. They're Very warehouses. True. Very true. They're, they're in places that we can't just go and see. Yeah. yeah. So I think that skews our view. But I'm, I'm not fully there, but I'm leaning towards where both of you guys are at. Because I think what some men have to realize is women do have an argument for some of the points about men not stepping up. And I believe, especially when you look up the data for, you know, men under the age of like 35, like millennials and downward, I think there is a lot of guys who, as you and I, we all know them, we won't say their name because they won't be friends with us, but there's a lot of guys who they really don't have any jobs. They really yeah. don't do anything. Like they, like you, I don't know how they pay their bills all the time. So it's it's a it's a two part issue because on one end yes there are a lot of men who are not working or not applying themselves as they should let's say that right on the flip side though and I think this not to give the men an excuse but I do believe it contributes to the mentality of men is that the standard that women are setting mm. makes men feel like what's the point I was so basically it's yeah. like all right <laughs> if 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 the forty five thousand dollar a year job or fifty thousand dollar a year job would be respected mm -hmm. and you could still you know get you a good woman boom boom that i think more men would feel like okay cool i'll go take that job mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying but when you feel like if you ain't six figures you ain't good enough then it's like, I don't want anything less than that. Mm -hmm. If you feel like you're still going to get clowned for that 40 grand job, 50 grand job, there's a lot of men who just figure, what's the point? Because remember what I said earlier, a lot of men work to obtain what they desire. If they cannot obtain it, then it becomes, what's the point? Mm. So if this $40,000, $50,000 job, so I'm going to bust my behind to still not get the type of girls I want, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Not be able to live the life I want. When I can just live at home with my moms and just relax and take it easy, mm. They figure why not? So I think that it I do think a lot more men need to find themselves and find that again, find that purpose or at least some motivation. Mm -hmm. But I do believe a lot of women have they their perception of what is enough. And I think not even just women, a lot of people. Like I'm someone, I'll be honest with you, I despise when I hear people say a hundred grand is not enough money or not a lot of money. Yeah. Now I understand certain cities are gonna be different, New York's, LA's. But when I hear someone say a hundred grand is not a lot of money, to me, what I think, and again, this is feelings, not necessarily facts, is one, you've never consistently made a hundred grand mm -hmm. or you're horrible with money. Yeah. It's the second one. You know what I'm saying? It's because if you were good with money and you consistently made that, there's no way you can look me in the face and say that's not enough to, to have a good life. hundred percent. No, I agree. I agree with you, man. I agree with everything that you said in regards to that. So... Before we talk about the hundred grand, because I want to talk about that, you said something and you you you, you made a lot of guys happy <laughs> in the comments about the comments, and so I this feelings no facts, and I'm and I'm curious to this as well. I think there's a lot of women online sharing about their expectations, mm -hmm. and when you ask them to verbally share what do you want, a lot of times they oh they would share best case scenario, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's kind of like. You ask a guy, what kind of car would you like to drive? Lambo, Rolls Royce, Bugatti, McLaren. What kind of car are you actually driving? Toyota, <laughs> Nissan, Honda. Okay. So to me, I wonder, is when these women sharing online, because you counsel thousands of women at this point, when they're sharing all these financial expectations online, is that matching up with the guys that they're actually dating? Absolutely not. <laughs> 
<laughs> and that's this is where I would encourage men who get discouraged by these conversations they hear from women. It's not the reality of the life these women are living. A lot, there's a lot of women who will jump online saying, you know, men need to do this, men need to do that, he needs to provide for you, and yet they are literally living with a broke man who they provide for. Mm -hmm. All right. There's so many stories like that that you're just not going to see. But like you said, people, when they're online, they're giving what the ideal is, yeah. what they would like for it to be, but that's not what it actually ends up being. So men have to understand, don't let the noise fool you. You know what I'm saying? But yes, there is, there is still a level of reality of... Does finances make it easier? Of course it does. Mm -hmm. Does being broke make it harder? Of course it does. Mm -hmm. But... Again, this is, remember what I said earlier, when you're not getting the results you want, you have to ask yourself, what can I do better? The broke men who are winning, all right? And I say, when I say winning, I just mean they're still able to get mm -hmm. desirable women, mm -hmm. have found other things to tap into to get them the results. Yeah. They didn't just sit there and dwell in, I'm broke, I'm stuck here. No, they figured out how to beat the system. Yeah. There's always a way to beat the system. Mm. So you tell, so you telling me, mm -hmm. you know, these guys ain't gotta make that lot of money. They can get some other, uh, what is it, attributes or other skills to get the desired women that they want. Yes. Can you elaborate on those skills? Okay. So for example, if if you are a man who, I don't know why I'm gonna use this example. I'm about to pivot a little. No bit feelings, on, no facts. <laughs> it just shows you the it, it just shows you the difference. You know, there's a lot of women that say they love big guys, right? But in reality, if you talk to the average big man, he's not getting girls. Yeah. All right, let's just be real. Yeah, yeah. And if you talk to a big guy who got himself in shape, he would clearly tell you he got better, he got more women when he got in shape, right? However, show a woman a big guy who knows how to dress, present himself, look like something, and it tips the scale a little bit, no pun intended. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It moves the needle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, again, just because he has one disadvantage, there's other ways to kind of circumvent that issue. So to get back to examples, how you present yourself as a man, huge deal. Because what I've learned, and I don't want men to take this advice as a way to manipulate the situation. Amen. Amen. But the reality is that if you can get your foot in the door, that's over 50% of the battle right there. Yes. Once she even discovers that maybe you don't have what she thought you had, if she's already reeled in emotionally, she's less likely to just drop it. You know what I'm saying? Depending on how much she likes you. The problem is men, when they get dropped, they think, oh, she was only about the money. No, you didn't have anything else to, to, to make her feel like it was worth staying here. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So if you got to start with, okay, how you present yourself. But if you're a really funny guy who, who she can talk to, that creates a level of dead. Do I really want to let this guy go? You see what I'm saying? If you're very helpful in other ways, that can that can uh, be a big a big win for you. You know what I'm saying? Um, being able to have good conversation with her. I mean, it seems silly, but it's really what can and because she's already now dealing with you. You see what I'm saying? It's different if that's all you have from the beginning. Like if you were just a good person to talk to, you probably just be her friend. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. But if you added but think about that. She can talk to you. Now make yourself more attractive and you might slide into romantic partner. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Because now you gave her that extra thing. You usually need at least two things to work with. Something that gets you in the door and something that gives her reason to keep you there. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So I think all those different things are can help you even when you don't have money. But I will say this. Because I don't want to fool men into thinking... You can ride that train forever. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> so at some point, she's still going to look for you to improve. So I would say that this method buys you time. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it does not last forever. Mm -hmm. And so as a man, you would still have to start to figure out how can I get to a more stable place financially. And I, But I will say this. There are some women, depending on... The reality is this. This is going to sound bad too, but F it. <laughs> you know, a person's options determines what they're going to deal with a lot of times. Mm. If she has a lot of options, she's less likely to tolerate this for too long. If she doesn't have that many options, 
Yeah. She probably ain't going nowhere. All right. Now again, this sounds bad. I'm just, yeah. I'm just being honest. Yeah. Feelings, no facts. <laughs> 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 but you know, actually, this is facts. I mean, yeah. <laughs> this is just facts. It is what it is. Yeah. I don't want again. I don't want men to try to like aim for the woman who doesn't have options just so he can like <laughs> stay there while being mediocre. Yeah. yeah. But it is a reality of how things play out. Hey, thank you for watching this video. Be sure to check this one out right here. And I'll see you there. Relationships are the key to a successful life. But there's five areas that we have to be mindful of when it comes to relationships. There's relationship with God, relationship with ourselves, relationship with family and friends.